Okay, so we'll begin as we welcome Yi Zhu from Florida State who will speak on algorithms for peak curvatures of different software interests. Thank you for the introduction and I'm very happy to come here to give this uh, presentation on our recent research about uh, peak curvature of different operators. Okay, so let's get started. So in this talk, here's the outline. I, I'll first talk about definitions and then talk about uh, our algorithms. Uh, so there are four small algorithms and uh, I'll explain what they are later. Okay, and finally, we'll, I'll talk about uh, something more about the uh, peak curvature. Um, that's something we are working on, and uh, I don't know how to categorize the things, so I just write more on peak curvature here. Okay, so let's get started. So, first definition. So, um, we first define the ring of different operators. Uh, of, over a field of characteristic zero. So let k be the, ration, be the field of rational functions, and we define the shift operator tau to be a C automorphism such that uh, tau of tau sends x to x plus one. All right, it turns out uh, that uh, uh, the skew polynomials of tau with Function with coefficients as rational functions form a ring. Uh, it's uh, the 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 multiplication of this ring is defined by this tau times a equals tau of a times tau, where a is a rational function. Okay, so this ring is called the ring of difference operators. And this ring, although it's a, it's a non-commutative ring, but uh, it's almost as good as a uh, Euclidean domain. We can, we can define orders for, for this ring. And with such orders, we are able to do a division with remainder. Okay, so it's almost as good as a polynomial ring, but uh, it's except, uh, except that it's non-commutative. Okay, so our final goal is to uh, uh, create an algorithm that factors any operators in this ring. Okay, by factoring I mean writing I mean writing the input operator as a product of uh, some other uh, some other operators with lower orders. All right, so while we work on this, we find that it might be a, the peak curvature of different operators uh, might be a powerful tool. Okay, so before I introduce the definition of peak curvatures, I will first talk about uh, different operators over a finite field, uh, over a field of characteristic P. Okay, so the definition is almost the same. So the, uh, the difference is instead of uh, rational functions over C, over a characteristic zero field, we have uh, rational functions over FP, which is a finite field. Okay, and uh, the multiplication is, def def is defined in a similar way. So tau times x equals x plus one times tau. Okay, and here's a major difference. So, for difference operators over characteristics zero, the center of the ring of difference operators has, is, is trivial. The center is just the ground field itself. So, but uh, in characteristic P, it has a non-trivial center. So, it's the polynomial of tau to the pth power with coefficients in this, uh, in this field. So it's a rational function, rational function, the field of rational functions in x to the p minus x. How do you get that? How do I get that? Uh, okay, because tau to the p times uh, x equals x plus p times tau to the p. So it's characteristic 
P, so x plus T is just x itself. So x and uh, tau to the P can, uh, commute. And also, if you look at x to the P minus x, so it's, it also commutes with uh, tau. Because if you apply tau on this function, you get itself. Right? So tau times x to the P minus x equals uh, x to the P minus x times tau. And uh, how do you prove that, now, that that's, the, that's the center? That's oh, nice. well, uh, if you have uh, something else, I mean, if you, yeah, that's a good question. I, like if you have, uh, Okay, uh, uh, yeah, I should be careful here. It's uh, this this one. I what I know uh, for sure is this one is in the center. Right. But uh, uh, if there's anything else in the center, uh, yeah, I should be careful here. My bad. Okay, and all right. So this is definitely in the center. Okay. Uh, all right. So in this. Uh, for different uh, for operators over finite fields, we think uh, let L be a, be an operator, and we think we consider the module dP divided uh, mod out by dP times L. What's dP? dP is uh, I, I is a ring of oh, okay, okay. difference operators over finite field. Okay, and we consider this module. Uh, this module is also a FPX vector space with uh, one of its spaces is one tau tau squared uh, up to tau to the n minus one, where n is the order of the operator. Okay, and it turns out that tau, if we think of tau as a map over this module, then it's a FP linear map. However, this this linear map is not uh, it's not FPX linear. It's because if you apply tau to x, um, then we end up with x plus one times tau. So it's not a linear. Uh, it's not it's not a FPX linear. Okay, so if we think about tau to the p, then this one is a FPX linear map. Because if you apply tau to the p to x, you get x plus p times tau to the p, which is x times tau to the p. So it is uh, FPX linear. Okay, so here comes the definition of uh, p curvature. So we call the characteristic polynomial of tau to the p as uh, FPX linear map, the p curvature of L. So uh, the convention is actually, so the convention is tau to the p is the p curvature. But uh, here, for convenience, we call the, its characteristic polynomial the p curvature because uh, we, don't, uh, we don't really compute tau to the p. Uh, you'll see later why, uh, why we, don't, we, don't, we don't use tau to the p. Uh, so its characteristic polynomial is uh, um, it's more useful to us. So we call the characteristic polynomial of this map the p curvature of L. Okay, so it has, uh, it has an important property, which I call the product rule. So if we have two, uh, if we have two operators, then the p curvature of their product is a product of their p curvature. Okay, so this is why we. This is why we find p curvature a powerful tool for factoring operators. Okay, so we can define p curvature for operators in this ring, with uh, polynomial coefficients. Uh, with 
uh, and with the integer coefficients. So it's, uh, the definition is pretty straightforward. So we, for, every, uh, for every operator in this ring, we just mod out its coefficients by p. And then we get uh, an operator over a finite field. And then we, uh, we look at the p curvature of that operator. Uh, yeah, and then we define the p curvature of operator in this ring as, it's, as the p curvature of its image in a finite field. Okay, so with such <coughs> defined p curvature, uh, okay, I, I also need to mention that for p curvature of these operators, it, uh, the product rule also holds. So with such defined p curvature, we can prove the irreducibility if the p curvature, if some p curvature of an operator is irreducible. And if the p curvature is not irreducible, uh, and then we don't know if the op operator itself is irreducible or not, but uh, we can restrict the search for right hand factors to certain orders. Okay? Is, is there an example? Um, uh, like when one is irreducible, the other one is not? Yes, yes, there is. Uh, uh, later, later. Later. later you will see that. Okay. Uh, okay, so for example, if we have an operator of order 10, we know its peak curvature can be factored into a, uh, two factors. One has uh, degree five, another one also has degree five. Then we know the only possible right-hand factor of that operator has, should have order five. Okay, so Let's, let's continue to look at uh, how do we compute uh, p curvature. All right, so we start with, uh, with uh, operator L. We assume it has uh, order n. So the map tau to the p, it has, uh, so uh, in its module, one tau tau to the n minus one is a basis, and if we uh, it has another basis, tau to the p tau to the p plus one and tau to the p plus n minus one. So if we can find this matrix A, then this matrix A is the matrix six representation of the linear map tau to the p, and then the characteristic polynomial of A is the is the p curvature. Okay, so how do we how do we find how do we compute this matrix A? So we start with uh, L equals zero. This is a relation of one tau tau squared uh, and tau to the nth. So with this relation, we can write tau to the nth power as a linear combination of one tau uh, just this basis. So we can write tau to the nth power as a linear combination of uh, the elements in this space. And then we can do this recursively. If we apply tau to L, so tau times L, then we get a, a, a relationship, we get a relation of tau tau square and tau to the n plus one. And then we can write tau to the n plus one as a linear combination. Uh, of one tau tau to the n minus one. Okay, so we do this recursively, and finally we'll reach. Uh, we can we can have uh, we can write all these elements on the left hand side of this equation as linear combinations of uh, uh, the elements on the right hand side of this equation. And then th that's, uh, that's the matrix A. Okay, so I call this a uh, plane algorithm. It's because uh, it's quite straightforward. So we just uh, write, uh, we just find the, the matrix representation of, uh, the, of the map tau to the pth power, and then we compute its uh, um, Characteristic polynomial. So this uh, this is quite straightforward. So 
Okay, so let's look at something tricky here. So we notice that in in the previous algorithm, if we don't if we don't uh, if we don't work with x, but instead if we work if we plug in x equals alpha, uh, algorithm one here refers to the uh, the plain algorithm I just talked about. So if we replace x by some alpha, alpha is an algebraic number over fp. And then we end up with p curvature evaluated at x equals alpha. Okay, so, so this um, computing p curvature directly is very slow. Uh, I'll, I'll show you uh, an example later. But uh, if we s s do this substitution, it's going to be pretty fast because alpha is, uh, is an algebraic element. So if you, uh, so that means uh, if we have alpha to the like dth power where d is, uh, is greater than its, uh, um, it, it, than its degree, then that means we can reduce that to a uh, to a lower or to a to a power of alpha with lower degrees. So this this is going to be very fast. Okay. So now the thing is, we know. So if we have, uh, we if we know, p uh, the p curvature of L evaluated at uh, a number of alpha then how do we recover, how do we rebuild the peak curvature itself? Okay, so we know that if, if we know, uh, if we have a polynomial and we evaluate, evaluate it at a, a bunch of numbers, then we, we can rebuild that polynomial by, by interpolation, right? So here, however, here, P, uh, the peak curvature of L is not a polynomial of X. It's a rational function of x. However, we can, so we ask uh, these questions. So can we find the denominator bound for p curvature? And can we find a degree bound for b times p curvature, where b is a denominator bound? So if we can answer these questions, then we can um, trans, Transform this question into a into a interpolation question for polynomials. Um, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, bound in terms of what? Bound in terms of uh, x. Denominator bound. Yeah. So so you can get a bound by just computing it, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so you you wanted some a priori bound, right? Right. Without computing. Right, right. So in terms of what, uh, what kind of things will be the bound? What kind of things will be the bound? Yeah, what kind of things do you think will be in the bound? Okay, uh, I'll answer that I later. Actually, yes, actually yes. Like we, are, we, are able, we are able to answer these questions. Okay. And a second question mm -hmm. um, regarding uh, algebraic numbers. Mm -hmm. So are you using just the minimal polynomial? Just minimal polynomial. You don't polynomial. use like which algebraic number it is. You don't do, do any intervals. No, we we just use the minimal polynomial. And uh, okay, so so you don't know so you don't know which root it is. Um. Well, right. We don't know. Don't know. Um, okay. But uh, it turns. I'll show you later. We, we have uh, we have an uh, alpha generator. Uh, you'll see that it 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 doesn't matter actually. Okay. All right, so we are able to answer these questions. So, okay, so here, here, is some, here are some notations. So sigma of A of X is A of X times A of X plus one times A of X plus P minus one. So, yeah, and P tilde of L is sigma A N times P of L, where A N is the leading coefficient of L. So a n is the first uh, is the quotient of the tau to the nth power. Okay. 
So it turns out this P tilde is a polynomial of x. So it's, uh, it's not only a polynomial of x, it's a polynomial of theta, where theta is x to the pth power minus x. And moreover, the degree bound, degree, uh, it's the theta degree of p tilde is the x degree of L. Okay, and we call p tilde the non-monic p curvature. You'll say that uh, p tilde, the non-monic p curvature also satisfy the product rule. Okay, so with these propositions, we are able to uh, rebuild our p curvature from, uh, uh, from its evaluations at some particular points. Okay, so next thing is the alpha generator. So I'll look at, uh, I'll look into uh, how to generate uh, alphas. Okay, so, all right, so let's go back here. So we know uh, the non-monic p curvature, that its theta degree is the degree, uh, is, is the x degree of L. So that means uh, the x degree of p tilde is uh, p times the x degree of uh, L. So that means if we, if we use, uh, if we have p times this many, so uh, let's, let's, say, let's say this, I, I call this one d. So if the x degree of L is d, then we can, we can, we can use uh, p d many alphas. That's because as a, as a polynomial of x, this one has p d, uh, the degree of this one is p d. So I can always use p d alphas to rebuild the non-monic p curvature. However, I don't really want to do that because if we think of this one as a polynomial of theta, it only has degree d. Right, so I, won't, I only want to use d points. Okay, so here is, so we require the minimal polynomials of alpha uh, to be not of degree divisible by p. So by this, okay, so the principle here is we want each alpha corresponds to a different Theta. So, you s if we, for example, if we do alpha one equals zero and alpha two equals one, they do give us the same same theta, but we 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 don't want we don't want that to happen, because that means we are uh, we are repeating ourselves. So we want a distinct alpha yields different distinct theta. Okay, so we require the minimal polynomials of alpha to be not of degree divisible by p. By this, I'm, I'm uh, excluding polynomials whose, uh, whose roots, um, who have, who, which have bad roots. By that I mean, for polynomials of not of degree div divisible by p, any two different roots Correspond, correspond to different status. So but anyway, how do you choose P? P is uh, just the prime number. So you, look, uh, you, you, you pick it arbitrarily, or how, how do you do it? Well, um, so here is, uh, I, I'm talking about it in a general setting. I mean, f just for general P and for general uh, operator over uh, FP. But, uh, uh, Okay, so I think your question is... Uh, your, your original operator is not over FP, right? Yeah, so um, we choose P such that uh, the order does not drop. Okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, 
yeah, that's for now. That's the only requirement we have. Okay, and we also re we also rewrite uh, irreducible polynomials, the minimal polynomials of alpha in this form. So what's good with such a form? If p uh, if if we have two irreducible polynomials and we rewrite both of them in such a form. Uh, if they are different, then that means their roots are good. By being good, I mean any two distinct roots correspond to different distinct thetas. Okay, so with, uh, with this, we can easily write our uh, alpha generator. So we first generate a bunch of uh, irreducible polynomials. So uh, I'm not writing the details here, but uh, uh, what we do is, so we look at the degree bound. Let's say the degree bound is D. Then we first generate a, a randomly, uh, we ge randomly generate a, a polynomial of degree D. And we factor it into a irreducible factors. Uh, yeah, th those irreducible factors are the uh, polynomials we generated, we generated uh, in the first step. Okay, and then in those, for those irreducible polynomials, we discard polynomials of degree divisible by P. And we then transform the other polynomials into this form. Okay, of course, after, after we rewrite the other polynomials in this form, we discard the repeated polynomials. If P -log polynomials are the same, when, then we just keep one. Okay, and we repeat this until the sum of degree of these polynomials uh, is greater than or equal to D. Okay, so notice that here, a degree, a, deg a polynomial of degree n, degree n contributes to n different values of theta. So, each root of each root of uh, so any two different root of such a polynomial correspond to different thetas. So, a polynomial of degree n will con contribute to a uh, n different value of uh, theta. Okay, so this is our uh, alpha generator. And we also have a dissingular riser. So, so we just, uh, we all know how uh, dissingularization works in characteristic zero. But uh, in characteristic P, we, uh, so here's my definition for characteristic P. So. If we multiply L by some other operator A, and then in their product, if, if some factors of the leading coefficient of L disappears in the product, then we say that factor is a removable factor. So our conjecture is that <coughs> An divided by removable factors uh, and and, find, and then we apply sigma on this is the denominator bound. So originally we have a proposition that a sigma of a n is a denominator bound, but uh, we can we conjecture that some some factors of a n are actually uh, uh, do do not show up in the denominator bound. Okay, so this is our conjecture, but. Uh, in practice, we don't really, we are not uh, in a hurry to prove this conjecture. In practice, we, uh, we, we care more about uh, removable factors of order one. So, we, so in our definition, we require our A to have order one. So we only care about uh, such removable factors. It's because um, removable factors of High, uh, higher orders. Um, so if you want to desingularize uh, at a higher order, 
that's gonna take some time. So it's not worth doing that. So we only care about uh, removal factors of order one. Okay, so yeah, and we, we can prove that uh, these removal factors of, of order one, uh, a particular removal factor of order one, do not show up in the denominator. Okay, so this can, so how does this help us uh, computing peak curvature? It's because uh, the, mo the non-monic peak curvature is actually sigma of an times peak curvature. So now I can do uh, this one after we remove the removal factor. Uh, this is the denominator bound. We can use this, we can multiply this with our peak curvature. And that one is a uh, is, uh, polynomial of x. So that one has a lower degree. So uh, that means we need less alphas. Okay, so we can integrate all these algorithms to uh, get our main algorithm. So we start with uh, with uh, operator in FPX tau. We first desingularize desingularize L, and then we generate a, a bunch of alphas, and we then compute. When we then evaluate uh, that b, b times p at uh, alpha. And finally, we can we use interpolation to uh, rebuild our peak curvature. OK, so this is our main algorithm. OK, questions? Could you explain the interpolation? Uh, OK, so. We know its value at uh, we know the value of this at uh, x equals alpha. You don't write so it's, it's one of the rules. Sorry. You, you don't know which alpha it is right so it's. Right, we don't know. Uh, you don't. So, uh, I wrote the program a month ago, so I don't quite remember the details, but uh, we. When we have the minimal polynomial of alpha, at some point we take the resultant of the uh, minimal polynomial of alpha and uh, and this thing and uh, the value of this at uh, alpha. Maybe would you mind giving a simple example on the board? How you interpolate when you don't know which root it is? Mm. Just simple computation. Some some trivial example. Well, it's a little, uh, artificial example. Uh, okay, so the thing is, I, I never do this by hand. So if, maybe I can share you my Maple program later. Yeah, I, I never do this by hand. I'm sorry. Okay, so here's a comparison. So if we do a Okay, so this is my L. This is a randomly generated operator. And if I use the plan algorithm and compute this P curvature for these different P's, then I use this, this much time. So when P is uh, not big, it's acceptable. But, uh, when p gets big, it's, it, it takes much longer. If we look at uh, our algorithm, it only takes seconds, even when p is, uh, is pretty big. So f when p equals 127, uh, it doesn't, f it, it doesn't uh, terminate at a reasonable time, so I terminate that manually. Uh, so uh, two questions. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay, but it doesn't really matter which p you choose, right? As long as you mentioned it doesn't uh, decrease the order. Right, 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 right. So how? So in reality, mm -hmm. how do you really? Why would you need uh, larger p's? 
that's because uh, that's because so if we if I want to factor a particular operator, uh, you uh, computing its one of its peak curvatures is not enough. We want to uh, compute a bunch of its peak curvatures. It's because with more peak curvatures, we can we know more information about uh, the orders of its factors. Yes, yeah, so actually, I forgot uh, you probably mentioned. So how do you, so once you do p, how do you go back? How do you? I forgot. Oh, okay. So I, I forgot the, like the, the 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 bigger picture, the whole story. Okay. So yeah, the p curvature satisfies the product rule. So the the p curvature of the product is the product of the p curvature. Mm -hmm. So if a fact if an operator can be factored into op, into two operators. It can be written as L1 times L2. Then that means its p curvature can be written as the p curvature of L1 times the p curvature of L2. That's for every p. And the original operator is without p. Right. So you start without the p, but the p curvature is, is after you choose the p. Right. Ah. And you want to choose different p's uh, in case. So, for example, uh, in some. Uh, uh, it's possible that uh, uh, an operator is reducible in characteristic zero, but it's reducible in some uh, characteristic p field. Uh -huh. And what do you do with the p's? Uh, so, uh, so once it's reducible, what do you do? You pick other p's. So, and how do you do that? Uh, yeah, we 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 compute a, we compute a peak, its peak curvature for a bunch of p's. And how do how many of this? How do you choose this? Um, yeah, that's a good question. We haven't worked on that. So, yeah, so, but, uh, and would you do that every time with factors or, or not? So, uh, sorry, what's your question again? So, once you reduce to p, uh, uh, it, uh, so the bad situation that it factors, right? Or, or, so, so when, when would you, when would you be prompted to search for another p? I think it's more that he's just given a p and he wants to know what they're in factors. No, he wants to factor the original. The original. The original. The original. The original. So, so, well. I mean, in the actual algorithm. So, in what situation would you go to another p? Well, after we after we finished uh, computing it, its p curvature, we move on to another p. But would you run forever? When do you stop? Uh, well, <laughs> um, we just uh, I doesn't see. It. <laughs> we just do that for a reasonable amount of p's. Um, you see, this algorithm this algorithm doesn't take much time. So we just maybe we we compute this. Maybe we should ask the question this way. So suppose you did five p's, right? And you find out that the the the, the um, they factor mm -hmm. uh, p of that. Then how do you get knowledge of the factors of L? Could you have an example? No matter how complicated, could you just show an example so that we could actually see how it works out? Okay, so, um, okay, can I write on the board maybe? Yeah, okay. 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 Just for the, for the video. Okay, so, Let's do a very simple example. So, tau squared plus x plus one times tau plus x. If you compute its peak curvature, you will see that its peak curvature is uh, lambda plus theta times lambda plus one. So that means uh, so if any p when is well, for this particular example, yes, it's for 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 any p, right. it, it it factors into mm -hmm. such a form. So then we know uh, it could have uh, a right hand factor of order one. Mm. But uh, this this example is uh, simple because it only has order two. It, it, it can if if yeah <laughs> if it doesn't factor trivially, then it should have. Uh, uh, or one factor, right. but uh, um, 
for operators with higher orders, uh, it, it's going to be difficult to do that by hand. So, so no, no, I don't want you to do it by hand. I want to see, let's say, I mean, the one that you put up, so the three. Yeah. Um, so what, what kind of uh, peak averages for two different peaks of light? And then how do, you, okay. how do you get information on the order of the factors of L? Yeah, yeah that, that's a good question. So uh, what, what is theta, by the way? Sorry? Theta. What is oh. Theta is uh, x to the p minus f. All oh, okay. oh, oh, right. Yes. Okay. Okay. OK, so so maybe I'll give you a bad example. So let's so you can give us even a fake example. Uh, OK, <laughs> so, so let's add this. Let, let's add this let i to this. OK? It turns out uh, for any p, this is also the p curvature for this. Okay. However, it's, uh, it's not, uh, this one does not uh, always factor. So this is a bad example. So from this p curvature, we, we cannot, we cannot ex exclude the possibility that it has, uh, it has an order one factor. But in reality, it, uh, it doesn't for, for, at, for some i. So, so that means that after you compute the p curvature and factor it, um, right, we cannot say anything right. about it. Right but now, so if you do another p curvature, you might be able to say more. Is that the, is that the idea? Um, this example is so bad yeah, that, that, uh, that, that no matter what p curvature you choose, it's right, bad. right, right. But it, in the other examples. Where it is maybe not so bad. You're saying that yes. sometimes the, the, the factoring of the peak curvature will give you information, and sometimes it won't. So, right. so the question is then: If you look at a the peak curvature factorization, mm -hmm. how can you know that it actually helps you something about the the, the factor, the, whether it's possible to factor or not? Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's. I believe that's a difficult question. So so far we have no. We have no. Uh, we cannot tell. Uh, if if the peak curvature always factors, we so far we don't have any ways to tell if if the original operator factors or not. But uh, so this one has so, two. So but, but if it doesn't factor, then then you can say it doesn't factor. Yes, yes. If the peak curvature doesn't factor, then we know the original operator doesn't factor. Anyway. So, so you're saying that so if one p factor doesn't factor, then every p factor doesn't factor. So if one p curvature doesn't factor, this doesn't. This does not mean the other p curvature do but, not factor. Uh, but it means the original factor. factor so, so, no, so, so the, the strategy is to keep trying the p, oh, p um, the, the p curvatures, yes. and hope. That you find one that doesn't factor, yes. then you would know. Then you would know. Yes. But yes. otherwise, otherwise we, we, it's kind of a wasting of time. So, uh, so it, to speak. I don't. I don't. I don't want to say it's a waste of time. But uh, let's say if we have uh, order A, yeah. and its its p curvature factors into a p one and p two, where p one has degree. Three and p five has p two has degree five. Right. Then I know the original original uh, operator could have factors okay. of order three or order five. It doesn't have any other fact uh, factors of any other order. It does not have. It does not have. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And, so and so 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 getting a p curvature factoring limits. The order of yes. the factors of the original L. Yes. Okay. Yes. Exactly. So that's why you want to keep doing that. Yes. All right. Okay. And is there some sort of for almost all p kind of statement? Um, yes, there is. There. Uh, well, I mean, we are we are working on that. We we have we do have something called the global curvature. So like for such p curvature for such operators, is p curvature always have such a form? Uh, you can think of this polynomial as a polynomial 
uh, over a characteristic zero field. And if picometer always look always looks like this. So this is the this is called the global peak, global curvature. But uh, it's not 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 all the operators uh, not uh, not every operator has a global curvature. This is something we are working on, and yeah, that, that's the global thing is also a difficult question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you, you, you continue, right? Yes, I will continue. Thank you. Okay, so uh, here's another comparison. That's the uh, I have another plane algorithm uh, uh, using another using the right division. Uh, it turns out that this plane algorithm is uh, is faster than the previous plane algorithm, but uh, it's still not it's still not uh, fast when p is large. Okay. But all these algorithms, you implemented them, right? It's yeah. your algorithms. Yes, yes. And uh, are they available uh, online? Can one download them? Are they part of Maple? Or how is it? Uh, What's this? I have not posted them online. I'll, um, we have another author who is my advisor, so I'll talk to him uh, if we can, if we could post that online. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me say some. Is, is he the only other author? So whose work is this? Is you you was your advisor? Yes. Yes. Everything here. Right. Okay. So uh, let me say something more about uh, p curvatures. So the p curvature, if we replace uh, lambda in the p curvature by tau to the p, it turns out that uh, that operator is actually a multiple of L. Why? Because this is actually a direct application of the uh, KD uh, Hamilton of theorem. Okay, so let's see an example. So L is tau minus x, p of L is just this, tau minus x to the p minus x. And if we replace lambda by tau to the p, then this operator is a multiple of L. All right. And the conjecture is uh, for any operator L, it has a part in the center, and it also has a part that is not in the center. Its p curvature, if we, re I mean, replace the p replacing lambda in the p curvature by tau to the p, is uh, the center part to the p's power times the uh, uh, less common left multiple of the non-center non part um, where, okay, so we replace the x by x plus i here. And by center, do you mean that, uh, uh, this one, or do you mean the center? Uh, I mean this one. Okay. I mean this one here. But, uh, this is, um, well, this is a conjecture, so there, there's something back, back here, so I, uh, I will work on this in the future. Could you come back to the previous slide? Yeah, so, um, when you say it's a multiple, um, are you talking in the um, or we carry the piece case or the zero case? Piece case. In the piece case, so yes. factor in the, okay. Yes. All right, and we also have a conjecture about a Newton polygon of p curvatures. The conjecture is, remember that uh, the non-monic p curvature 
has the same degree, its theta degree is the same as the x degree of L. So we conjecture that uh, they actually have the same Newton polygon. So um, by Newton polygon, I mean the mono, the the variable of non monic p curvature here are theta and uh, lambda. Okay, I, I put Newton polygon in quote because the Newton polygon here is not uh, is a little different from the Newton, the usual Newton polygon. So actually, we um, when we plot the Newton polygon, we don't care. We only care about uh, the line segments on the top. We don't care about the bottom. So it's the lower convex hull of the new, uh, of the uh, of those points. Okay, so let's say an example. So L, uh, this is a randomly generated operator. So this is L, and I choose I set p equals five, and its p curvature is this lambda cube plus two lambda square plus this stuff, and. The Newton polygon of L is the lower convex hull of these points. And the Newton polygon of the non monic peak curvature is the lower convex hull of these points. They turn out to be the same, to be the same thing. Okay, and we actually, we almost uh, prove. Well, what, what's the significance of this? Suppose this conjecture is correct. And what, what, what's the significance of that? Uh, well, we we just uh, think it's mathematically interesting, ah, okay. and it's uh, the proof it of a uh, proof of it is uh, not uh, not too different from the, that degree thing. So the proof you have a proof of the conjecture. <laughs> we, I mean, we almost we almost, uh, but uh, before I. Before I actually write it down, I don't want to say it's a proposition. I just want to be, uh, you know, careful. And uh, uh, maybe you could still say, so if you know Newton polygon, uh, what can you do with that? So what does it help you do? Um, well, okay. So, well, uh, this reminds me of uh, an application of the Newton polygon. So, um, so okay, so maybe let's look at uh, this slide. Okay, so if we have an operator over this field, k equals c uh, parenthesis parenthesis t. So t is one over x. So we know that uh, any operator in this ring can be factored completely in some algebraic ex extension. When we compute this factorization, we use the Newton polygon, right? And so we conjecture that there's some relation between uh, factorization in this form with p curvature. And, and uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah that, that's also something we're working on. So we, uh, Okay, so we can ask the question for operators over finite field, can we always factor that completely in, in, a, in some algebraic extension? Well, the answer is uh, no. Uh, an example is tau square minus x, it cannot be factored over uh, F2. Uh, I mean, over some uh, fin uh, algebraic extension. Uh, but uh, in some sense, the answer is yes, if we avoid uh, uh, wild ramification. So if you look at this example, so the order of this operator is two. P, the prime here is also two. So this is uh, something we call a wild ramification. So this thing, if you factor this operator in characteristic zero, it, We'll, uh, we need to, uh, the ramification index is going to be 2. So that's something we want to avoid. So if we, uh, if we can avoid wild ramification, then based on our ex experiments, it can always be factored. Uh, we don't have a rigorous proof yet, but uh, 
we did some proof. We done we did some experiments, and yes, uh, it do it does factor. Okay, so and such factor such factorizations, I believe, uh, are related to p curvature. Okay, so here's something. Uh, here's the global curvature thing. So if uh, so, let's see this example. So L equals tau minus x. What's for almost all? So what does it exact mean for almost all primes? So for uh, for all but finitely many primes. Because it. Uh, the prime number could appear in the denominator. Uh, and how many of those would you exclude? Do you know, like, based on L? Mm. Well, I would say... It, the, so, remember, we have, uh, we have a denominator bound. Mm -hmm. So we can look at the denominator bound. If it's not in the denominator bound, then uh, we don't... Hopefully, if it's not in the denominator bound, then it, uh, it, its p curvature is is the global curvature modeled out by that prime number. Mm -hmm. Okay, but uh, I admit that there's also something vague with, with this definition. Uh, we, mm, so I don't know if this is a suitable what, definition. What is what is, what is vague? I mean, I don't know if this is a good definition or not. Before, before we, um, before we have some good results about it. Okay. All right. So here is uh, the example I talked about on the board. So such operators also have global, global. I mean, it, it's a typo. It should be global curvature. <coughs> All right, and. Okay, so here's a list of things we are gonna be working in the future, and of course this does not. Uh, there's something. Of course, this does not does not cover uh, all the things we will work on in the future, because there might be something we have not uh, discovered, but is also important. Okay, so we'll work on. We'll try to uh, prove that uh, the Newton polynomial thing. So they have the. The non-mnemonic p curvature have the has the same Newton polygon as the operator, and we also want to uh, uh, prove that uh, uh, factorization of operators uh, in characteristic p without a wild uh, ramification. Okay, and we also will also look into a uh, dissimilarization global curvature. Oh, okay. And about uh, the singularization, I believe that uh, the fact that p curvature is a multiple of the operator, if we replace lambda by tau to the p, is uh, might be a tool to prove the dissimilarization in the general case. And also, um, at some point, we might uh, want to look into the relations with p curvatures of different differential operators. So for differential operators, we can also define um, p curvatures in a similar way. And uh, there's an article about uh, computing characteristic polynomials of p curvatures for different differential operators. So I believe there is some relation between uh, Difference, this dif difference case and the differential case. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll investigate that later. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you. Uh, Question? Could you say something about other methods not using p curvature to factor difference operators? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We do have that. Uh, if um, 
this year in SRT, I give a poster presentation. Uh, in my poster, uh, we we do have another algorithm. Oh, okay. No, so, I don't mean algorithm. I mean actually factor operation without uh, using something called peak curvature. Yeah, yeah. The, that algorithm, I mean, it doesn't it doesn't okay. involve peak curvature. And also, so okay. What do you use? Uh, okay. Uh, well, that's uh, that's. Uh, that's gonna take another class, I believe. Oh, just very roughly. Okay, so what theory is it based on? Okay, so I guess before we before I talk about uh, our algorithm, I'll talk about an algorithm called the BK Bronstein's algorithm. That algorithm factors different operators. Uh, it factors differential operators completely, and we can. We can mimic that approach for different cases. We can also factor uh, difference operators completely, theoretically. But in practice, for operators with order greater than 10, it never terminates. So in practice, we, uh, we want to uh, find some other algorithms. So our algorithms, uh, we, we make use of uh, singularities. So we use uh, single we use singularities of an operator to uh, construct some special solutions. So, if a spe if a solution uh, satisfies uh, is a solution of an operator of lower order, then that operator is a right hand factor. So we use this fact, and we use uh, a. Singularities to construct some special solutions. Well, have you compared the, the let's say, computing time using mm -hmm. the peak curvature method, your new algorithm, but compared not with the original or the plain uh, peak curvature, but with the other? Okay, so the peak curvature doesn't really factor the op the operator. It just uh, Oh, tells just, us some information it. about it. But so you have never, never used it to act with factor? Right, right. Examples? So far we have not uh, used it to, to factor. Mm. Uh, but uh, so how, how confident are you that this theory actually has any use to factor a different operator? It's because <clears throat> in the Bicky Brownstein's algorithm I just talked about, uh, we do need uh, if we know some information about uh, the order of uh, okay. of uh, uh, factors, we can accelerate that. Okay. All right. Okay. So, but uh, yeah, to uh, to have uh, an algorithm that uh, factors operators completely, there's still a long way to go. Yeah. And on the on the other side, we think uh, this theory is. Uh, uh, itself mathematically interesting. Of course, of course. More questions? So, um, so is there other algorithm that shows that a difference operator is irreducible? No, no. But yeah, this, the, but this one does it. Yes, right? yes, yes. That's why we want That's to implement implement this. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, Bicky Brownstein's algorithm can definitely prove the irreducibility, but uh, it costs a long time. So, so there is, but it just takes a long time. Yeah. Well, there is here too, but you don't even know how long. Because you have to keep trying until, you know. Right, right. <laughs> right. So, so it takes a long time, but it stops. But here, this one, we don't know it stops. Is that correct? Right, yes, yes, it's correct. Okay, uh, so more questions? That's it. Thank you. Thank you.